friends, I want to make a video just for you. Somebody requested how to perform CPR in 2022. I'm assuming they are graduating in 2022 and thinking that CPR is going to be so different and so let me help you. Let me help you. Here we go. First of all, I want you to release all of your anxiety and fear around this and come to me. I am Nurse Meg from nursemegaran.com and I'm here to just make your life easier. I'm here to revolutionize this next generation of nurses and make them super duper awesome. I wanna give you the foundations because schools are struggling, hospitals are struggling to give proper preceptorship and orientation and that's where I come in. Anything you need to know, I am your resource, I'm here to help you. So the CPR guidelines change all the time, but the most recent changes were probably about a decade ago um, that were focused more on compressions than breaths. We know we want to circulate the oxygenated blood before oxygenating more blood, that is more important. There are some differences in RQI 2020, if you heard about that. Um, a lot of CPR guidelines changed for healthcare workers regarding how we renew it, how do we practice it, all of those things. I have an article that I will link down below to that, um, but I wanna talk about codes with you. So I'm gonna be reading from my um, course, The New Nurse Survival Guide, about the first 10 things to do in a code. So first I wanna talk a little bit about being confident in a code. If it's your code, take ownership. Um, if it's your patient who's coding, have like your report papers ready. Um, it, hopefully you've filled them out and they're in your pocket. Um, if you have a wow with you, open it to the patient's chart so you can answer questions or somebody can put in orders for you who is like leading the code. Um, you should never leave the room for any reason if it's your patient coding. Um, stay there the whole time because you are the resource, you have a lot of knowledge, and be ready to uh, contribute to that. Um, remember, you should call a code blue or hit the code blue button and initiate compressions right away if you feel your, if you find your patient unresponsive uh, with no pulse and not breathing, call the code blue. Start compressions as soon as possible. People will come to help you and do everything that needs to be done. Please initi initiate compressions right away. You increase the chances of your patient making it and returning um, a pulse. So listen, if you are on the code team and you are, it's not your patient coding, um, you need to show up and be important in your role. So stay in your role. Once you have a job, stick to it to the end of the code. Don't be like, oh, I'll, I'll help chart. Oh, I'll help uh, pass meds. Stick to your one job that you have been given either by the person who's running the code or the nurse who's um, patient is coding, stick to it. Um, support your fellow nurses and staff by being the best you can be because that will bring about the best possible outcome for the patient. Use your support staff, okay? Uh, realize that there's a lot of preliminary things that can be done by like a nurse's aide or a secretary or another nurse. Uh, t the tech can get the vitals in the code, they can get the blood sugar, they can do compressions, they can go get the code cart, things like that. A secretary can grab the chart or open the chart, they can call the doctor, they can like grab something from the supply room or another department. A code is the time to utilize all of your resources uh, to be as efficient as possible while staying in the scope of practice of everyone's job, okay? All right, so here's a quick list of things that need to be done in a code blue or a rapid response as soon as you need help. These are the 10 things that should be done in the first two minutes, okay? So number one, code status. Is this patient a full code? Initiate compressions, hard board, elbows locked, hard and fast. Always double check code status. Number two, bring the code cart in. Whether you're gonna use it or not, bring it in the room. You don't have to open it, but at least bring it in the room to see if you have to open it and start, you know, pushing meds, respiratory stuff, intubate, all of that. Next, delegate someone to record. Someone takes the role of recorder and starts filling out all those forms. Number four, life pack. Put the patient on the life pack monitor so you can see the heart rate, the rhythm. Put the D-fib pads on the patient if they're super bradycardic or if they're um, in VTAC or like super tachycardic. Um, number five, airway. Put the patient on oxygen, venti mask, non-breather, like whatever they need. Um, and if it's that they're really struggling to breathe, set up suction right away um, because the opportunity may arise for them to be intubated. You want suction set up right away. 
hook up that Ambu bag and get suction and then of course call respiratory if they're not already there. Uh, number six, get a set of vitals. Where, where are we with this patient? Temp, blood sugar for the records, but set of vitals, blood pressure, heart rate, let's, let's get this. And then of constantly be assessing. One person should uh, assess all the IV access, central line access, flush it, and then that person is gonna be the one who's going to give meds. So they're just going to be standing between the code cart and the access, the central line or the IV or whatever it is. That is their only job. And then number nine is understand who is going to run the code, who's gonna give orders. Do you have like a house nurse practitioner that goes to codes? Is the doctor right there? Would that be great? Is there an ER doctor that comes and kind of like takes over the code? Like some hospitals designate that to run the code. So like who's running the code? Who's giving orders? <laughs> Number 10. Oh, hold up, hold up. It's all coming back to me now. Oh, I skipped charting. Yes. And then um, one person should have a wow or a cow or a computer and um, with the patient's chart open, ready to put in orders as um, whoever is giving the orders delegates them. Um, and then the last one is stay put. So from then on, everyone stays put in their job and awaits orders from the ARMP or the MD who is running the code. If you are the nurse whose patient is coding and you delegate these 10 things, you're gonna be the most impressive nurse on your floor. Everyone's gonna freak out. Like this nurse knows what she is doing, she knows how to utilize her resources, and the code will run so much smoother. So you can find this list in my course, The New Nurse Survival Guide. You can also um, find it as like the resources for registered nurses. I do have um, some articles on my website about these 10 things, but print them out, memorize them. Anytime there's a code, on your patient and you can delegate these 10 things or even if it's not your patient and that nurse is really struggling delegate those 10 things and get the code running smoothly the faster that you delegate these things and put people in their roles the better the outcome will be and that's the whole point of this right that's the whole point of what we're doing is to help people and have better outcomes for your patients we want people to live and we want to use science to help them live, right? Thank you so much for watching this video. I want to not close this video before I mention that if you are a brand new nurse and a code does happen, I want you to go through that entire code cart. Like if they use a code cart and that happens to be used in the code, I want you to really explore that code cart after the code is done. Get to know every single drawer, which one is respiratory, which side has epi, uh, what's on that bottom drawer, like explore them all and really get to know your code cards so that when you are in a code situation, you already have that junk memorized. And by the way, it's pretty standard. Of all the hospitals that I've worked at, they have like switched the respiratory drawer or like a med drawer or something like that, but they're essentially all the same. If you memorize them, you know where everything is, you're gonna be just fine. So explore those types of things. Also play with the life pack and stuff like that if you get the chance to um, after a code and it's just kind of sitting there. Really understand that uh, because you don't want to be experimenting when you're in an emergency situation, guys. <laughs> so please let me know if this video helped you. Comment below where you're watching from. I'm always super curious where people are watching from. And like this video if you made it so far. Subscribe to my channel for more nursing support kind of stuff. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.